Hello everyone and welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. With today's video, we're gonna introduce you to the Kenya series, where we go and find the most incredible recycling stories from Kenya. But this time, it's not gonna be me going around, but we have Kat to find the best recycling stories and bring them to you. So over to you, Kat. Hello everyone, this is Kat, and I'm excited to introduce you to some of the amazing projects and people in Kenya and East Africa that use precious plastic to empower the communities with recycling machines, make beautiful art objects and products, and educate and teach a lot in schools and even on boats. Kenya was actually the first place ever that we went to as a team. We're currently in Kenya and we transformed this old shed into a precious plastic workspace. So we learned a lot from that and have a little bit of a special connection to this place. And I'm very happy to see how the community here grew around it. But before we go into the small scale community doing something about plastic waste, let's have a look at Kenya and its situation with plastic. Yes, that's buses in Kenya. <laughs> they sing. So first of all, Kenya is a beautiful country. You might know it from jumping Maasai's, big national parks, wildlife, beautiful beaches, palm trees, coconuts. So pretty beautiful spots. But sadly, surprise, also these beautiful spots are not sheltered from plastic waste. I grew up coming here for as long as I can think. And I remember that very familiar smell of burning plastic and the view of dumped plastic alongside the road. The waste management here actually, as in many other countries, works like this, that the plastic is being collected with all the other waste and is dumped directly on a big mountain of just mixed stuff and from there, under the most hazardous conditions, informal sorters now come and try to pick out the valuable stuff that they can find within that mess. So amazingly enough, mostly through those informal collections and waste pickers, there's actually quite an established plastic recycling industry here. So if you go into the deeper corners of the streets, you actually find people crushing plastics, ready for the industry to use it, and also other people using extrusion machines to make pellets, fencing poles and flooring tiles and most recently there's also this young lady who made global headlines doing her recycled plastic indestructible cabros. A young entrepreneur is now transforming this plastic waste into sustainable and affordable building materials helping to provide solutions to the construction industry as well as conserving the environment. Let's turn trash into cash up to bigger companies who really now on a bigger scale try to collect from the households and implement more waste management from the source. And whilst recycling has been increasing quite a lot, Kenya has also been on the forefront of waste management policies. They put in place one of the most strictest plastic bag bans in the world. The use, manufacture, importation of all plastic bags used for commercial and household packaging will be illegal. They also have laws that don't allow any single-use plastics in the protected areas, which is national parks, a lot of the heritage sites, which they have a lot here. And they also are implementing laws and schemes that force households to segregate their waste to then make it easier to allow waste management from source. I have a friend coming here, by the way. Hi. <laughs> Boda Boda also coming. Welcome to my growing family. All of these policies and, and waste management laws, they are, you know, on the paper and sound really good, right? But of course, what's on the paper and what's actually happening on the ground are two very different things. So for example, those plastic bags which are banned, now they just replaced them with these woven plastic bags, which is also plastic, but just not the one that is banned. And in fact, they're really polluting the whole environment in the same way. Thank you. <laughs> Very useful. As there's also a lot of poverty here and people struggling and really just trying to survive day by day, these small, small packaged things that only cost a coin, they are really popular. So the industry really finds their way to flood the market with all their single-use stuff, which gets thrown away after a very short amount of time. But let's stop talking about this whole mess of bad situation about plastic waste. You know it all. He's already crying as well. It's probably something that you know from your place or places that you've been to. Out of poverty and necessity, often a lot of creativity grows as well. And Kenya is really a very good example for that. You would be amazed how much houses, tools, toys um, and other objects you find around that are actually made from waste already and using the resources you have available. 
And that's also where Precious Plastic fits in so well with the DIY small scale approach that allows people to now start recycling with just the resources they have around, not relying on governments on, or laws or industry to actually make a change. So alongside a lot of artists and people just being creative with all sorts of ways that they find around, we actually have quite a big precious plastic community here. So there's a, a, quite a lot of workspaces doing recycling in slums, educating in refugee camps, educating in schools, making products like baskets, handbags, dusty bins, chicken fence, traditional fishing dough. So in the upcoming videos, we will highlight for you the most established, the most consistent and active ones. So we'll start with Alicia and Manduku from Fresh Plastic Kisi, who were part of our first group of trainees. And they really continued their journey of precious plastic in different ways as a plastic extrusion artist and plastic recycling educators. We also visit Plastiki Rafiki in Nairobi, who established the precious plastic model in the school and actually ended up being the central machine shop for the whole East African area, providing different communities and groups with the small scale machines that Precious Plastic offers. And finally, we go to Lamu, an island on the north coast of Kenya, where the Flip Floppy project built a whole sailing boat out of recycled plastic and is using precious plastic machines to educate the communities on land and on the boat while traveling to change their perspective and their relationship with plastic and try to get them to join the fight and the movement for a better circular system. So, alongside these visits, we also documented a few of the very interesting techniques that we found from those people, from the community. So you will actually be able to learn from Manduku, how he makes his really cool and quite simple chicken fence and also his incredibly beautiful baskets. And we even have a how-to of making a whole boat out of recycled plastic. So make sure you don't miss out on that. I think that's it for now. Hope you're looking forward to the videos. If you want to see them a week in advance and support our work to support the global community of small-scale recyclers, make sure you head to our Patreon page to become part of our global army of people fighting for a better world. That's it. I hope you have a good day and uh, see you in the next videos. Or as we say here in Kiswahili, to Taonana. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>